So today we're joined here in the heat, County Leash, with Michael Boot. Michael, thanks very much for welcoming us on the farm here today. We're just going to discuss a few options here. Michael has bought, purchased stock through us in the livestock department in Grass Tech. And we'll also look at other impressive facilities on Michael's farm here today. You're very welcome, Liam, and it's a pleasure to uh, show you around and, and um, have a chat. Perfect, come on. Yeah, so Michael, just on the infrastructure here at the Millican and that, would you mind giving us a quick download on, on, on the facility here? Yeah, well, the, this facility, we're making this facility here now for, for four years. Uh, we had uh, gone up in our cow numbers and, and we were working in an eight unit power, which was off, just it was taking too long and, and uh, very difficult and time consuming, four hours in the morning, three hours in the evening, we had to do something. Yeah. So then, uh, four years ago then, we, we, we conceived the idea to build this new parlour and, and um, uh, it's a Delaval, uh, it's a, I think they call it a, a midline, a, a midline uh, uh, parlour, uh, sort of middle of the range, okay. it, it, it has got mid meters, uh, cluster removers, uh, that type of thing. It's uh, we're currently making 20, uh, 20 cows, 20 units in there, but the pit and everything is designed <coughs> for 24. Cool. So we probably will, with the further increase in numbers, we'll, we'll very soon probably put in the other four units now. Yes, it's more efficient. What would you have the herd done now in the mornings and evenings on average? Oh, at, 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 peak, time, at, at peak time back there a month ago, uh, you know, or three weeks ago, probably a peak milk supply, probably we put 160 cows through in an hour and 10, 15 minutes in the morning time and an hour in the evening time. Yeah, big difference. Oh, a huge, huge difference in, in terms of the, 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 the quality of life has improved dramatically since we put in this unit here now. Yeah. yeah. No, oh, no, we're very, very happy with it. Very, very happy with it. Cows love it. Great cow flow. Uh, as well, you know, and it's probably very important, I suppose, people that are investing in, in units like this, that, you know, they, they they look at it, assess it, and make sure that, because you can build this and spend as much money as you like it, and if it doesn't work, it's a waste of time. It's a fair know? point. So people should spend a lot of time in, in, you know, drawing out their plans or drafting them out or whatever, like, you know, to, to get, because it, it's super. We never have to, you know, we talked about a backing gate when we were building this. Oh, should we put it on? Should we not put it on? And we... We didn't put it on, and we don't need you it. You don't need it. Yeah, no. You never have to leave the pit. Yeah, like I can see it there, it's straight through. Cows, the minute they're in into the yard, they're coming straight into the parlour, and they have this area then out the front here. Yeah, this area, yeah. yeah, and, yeah and, and it keeps yeah. the whole thing moving. Yeah, the whole thing is moving. Like, there's lots of good cow stops here. There's plenty of room for, you know, to another cow to bypass, bypass another yeah. business and, and whatever, you know, and uh, so it, it, it works uh, very well, and it works very well then with the with the drafting system then and everything around the corner yeah. uh, as well, Liam, you know, the cows exit very quickly, uh, crushes, handling facilities, everything is, um, you know, it's all there as the cow goes out, uh, so... And you, I see you have your channel then... Yeah, the Basically channel all takes, the way. On the, takes on the water, that comes into a flow channel, yeah. and uh, then that in turn then goes on to, um, goes on down to uh, a lagoon. Perfect. Down yeah. here at the very, very bottom, and uh, our drafting facility, our drafting facility is, 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 is here, which is, um, you know... Great, great a, labour saver oh there, God, during breeding. Uh, it's incredible, uh, it's incredible, it's as good as four men, <laughs> Yeah. Know. And uh, a lot safer on man and beast as well because they, they just draft out automatically. And Reduce the stress then yeah, as well. There's no so, stress yeah. whatsoever. And um, we incorporated a herringbone crush then in here as well. Uh, for uh, We do actually make it as all day iron in there. Yeah. And uh, scanning and everything else. And uh, everything tail cutting. Uh, but for vaccinations and everything, we use the other crush here for yeah. testing and all that. And, and you have your foot, you have your foot bath area here as well. Foot bath there on yep. the exit, yeah, Super. it's all on the way out, yep. yeah. And there's no step, uh, there is a step over, but there's no, the level of the step is the same from where the cows are stepping from to where they're stepping in, so it, it flows very well. Yes. Also, there's no hold up with the cows uh, exiting the, and going out from the parlour there. So, we're very happy with the whole lot. 
I suppose the, the initial part of our design was, was uh, I suppose it just goes to show how long you have to start planning. The lagoon was the first thing that was actually built here. Yeah. If you can imagine, there was none of this here. And the lagoon was the first thing that was built. That was built back in 2014. Mm -hmm. And we actually had to pump the slurry from a cubicle shed up there uh, into it for a number of years. So I, I suppose it, it, it goes that you have to do a nice bit of planning ahead. Of course. And then the, the everything comes together, like, you know. Yes. So, yeah. So we're happy enough with the with the overall thing, and and uh, here we're we're making room now for expansion just here now as well at the end of the. At the end of the collecting yard the, here, yeah, you're going to have a ramp, I presume, coming yeah, straight well, up we'll there. Yeah, we'll go on out there with it further, and and uh, at sort of at the same level, and um, like this was built for 160 cows, and now it's full. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so time doesn't be long going. It doesn't be long yeah. going by. Yeah. No, it doesn't be long going by. So we have to uh, move ahead. And this was the this was the old milk and parlor, the walls and everything that was in the old milk and parlor inside. <laughs> and we pulled them all out and and uh, we we put it along there. So it's, uh, it's serving its purpose away still. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's still on. Still on. Yeah, serving its purpose away still. And uh, so yeah, so basically just inside here in the plant room, then Michael. Um, just a device here and a play cooler and, and the cooling of the milk. I presume that's auto wash? Oh, auto wash, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, just uh, it, it takes in the, it takes in the, the detergent itself. Um, you know, it allocates the, the, the whatever is the required amount, depends on detergent, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it takes it in and, and um, Trains it out when you just press the button and walk away. Walk away. Yeah. So it'll be programmed for just say your hot washes, your cold washes. Yeah. When you're doing your just scale. And we do a hot wash here. We do a hot wash. It's programmed to do a hot wash every day. Mm -hmm. uh, usually in the morning time we do a hot wash, cold wash in the evening time, and uh, it's it's maintained now very low. TBC is now you know we're down four and five and that Good. type of thing like you know. Yeah. And and so we're we're we're, we're very happy. We're very happy with that. Now. But there, it's a great tool, like you know, you can just literally when you're finished, we can just go. go. You can, it gives you that extra 10 15 minutes maybe to follow out the cows, lock oh, them out. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. You know, in swing time, that should be go that 10 15 minutes earlier to feed calves or whatever, like you know, yeah. and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, very good. Yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's it's. Uh, we're actually using when we did this building here, we did uh, the rainwater yeah. harvesting tanks, and we actually pump a full belt the rainwater through the plate cooler, mm -hmm. and that then goes back into a, a tank up up on the attic, and that then that rainwater then comes back, and that's what comes out of these. Pure volume, it's perfect. So we're 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 sort of. Um, Trying to be sustainable. It's, it's the buzzword uh, now. It's the buzzword now. You're, yeah, you're dead right. Bang on. But like I suppose, yeah, you're pumping the water. You have a second use for it, and sure, why not? And I suppose with the rainwater, it's soft. I suppose this area in Leash, like we would be hard water. Well, it would. Yeah, we had rainwater softeners, uh, water softener here, say for the for the, the washing of the plant and, and all that. Um, and you know, obviously because of the the heat and and we wash here at about 75 degrees. Yeah. Um, and that's what the machine is washing the returns at about, uh, you know, you know uh, sort of at the temperature there, 50 to 52 degrees, so somewhere about there. I think what the sort of the processes are demanding now. Super, you yeah, know, yeah. So and I suppose with chlorine free washes and all that, all these points need to be. The heat is very important with, yeah. uh, with the chlorine washes, yeah. yeah. The heat is very important with the chlorine washes. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but we, we've gotten away up quite well now, actually, with thermogenics and everything now. We've got, since we changed over, I was a bit worried about the. It's, it's serving its yeah, purpose. It's very well. Good. But I think it uh, contributed to the heat, the temperature. Temperature. Yeah. 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 And I suppose just on the bulk tank then, Michael, what size were you working with here? Well, it's probably too big at the moment. It's probably too big, for, but we, we hope to reach its full capacity maybe in a couple of years' time when yeah. we advance the numbers of cows. But it's a 17,000 litre, um, um, uh, 17, litre tank. And um, we opted to go for the the longer tank mm -hmm. rather than the shorter higher tank because you have more condenser to milk whether you have a tank 
up to the roof. Yes. Your condensers still only come, so you have more contact with milk and condensers in a long tank rather, rather than high. Yeah, no, that's fair point. Yeah. And that's uh, effectively reducing electricity costs and cooling milk and, and keeping that constant low temperature. Yeah, well, we find that, we find that it will actually, that it will cool. By the time we're finished doing our bits and pieces here, which is next to nothing when we're finished milking, yeah. the compressors are going off here down to three degrees. I've seen the milk truck back in here sometimes when we were milking the last row of cows. And he can he can put put on his pipe and suck out and the milk is perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. It, it cools. It's it, it cools very rapidly actually. It cools very very rapidly now. I must say we're happy enough with it. Mm -hmm. And um, we've had no no a couple of teething pallets with maybe a couple of computers inside on the milking parlor, but other than that, overall plain sailing. No problems. Super. No problems. That was an old roller door. It was attached to the calf house to the, beside where we walked down at the crushes oh, yeah. that's where we we reared the calves in there and we pumped the milk out directly from here from the, the, the from the the, the the line out of the car but this door was at the end of that and we took it in here then and we said look at rather than have to take out a gable end wall if the tank has to be pulled out or yeah. whatever we can open up the door and yeah, take yeah. it out there definitely yeah so it works uh, no, you're bang on, like, and sure, at least look like you're saying the 17,500 meter bull tank now might seem big, but sure, like you say, you're just going knocking things and pulling out things. Absolutely. Yeah. If, you, if that was your plan, you, everyone had their business plan in place, I suppose, for the next couple of years for their expansion. So um, it was good to do it there and then while you could. Well, the TAMS grant was available to us, and, and uh, you know, we said, look, at, we might as well do it now as do it later. Yeah. You know, um, because probably the. The Tams Grant was a great incentive to do the job properly. Yes. You know, and um, we were in a partnership here, Michael Jr. and myself, and we got, uh, it was, we were entitled to 60% uh, grant, yeah. you know, which uh, was, well, it was a no brainer really for us, you of know, course. to do it right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And our heating then is on, on, on gas. These are the gas boilers here. Uh, for the for the for the heating and um, uh, interesting enough, I'd say our energy requirements have gone down. Even though we're only milking with an eight unit power inside, with bigger motors, bigger everything here now, and our uh, our our energy bill has gone down by about three hundred euros a month. That's some saving. Yeah. Some saving. Yeah. 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 Incredible. Yeah, yeah, we're happy. We're we're happy with Terra. Uh, the reason why it was the, the reason why we put that in was well, we actually put in a whole new drinking line because the, the water trucks weren't big enough for okay. the bigger herd of cows, yes. and we had to do something. And then when we were we were building this here, we we, we designed it in a way that we were able to bring in extra water pipes and that that wasn't uh, been uh, affecting the house or yes. a backflow to the house or anything like that. In the so it was very simple then to put in the 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 terra sort of. Um, infuser into the water system if you like but it's we saw the problem we had was in periods of good grass growth uh, to well, firstly magnesium different you can you can you can up and down it a little bit but also if say you got down to half a kilo of nuts or something like that just for the sake of bringing the cows into the power the million the mineral requirements is not being met by the cow so you can up it on this and let it in, you know. So it it um, it is very good for solvent and, and to keep consistent to keep consistency in the diet. In, yeah, the absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it works. Uh, it, it it works quite well from that point of view. But um, probably you can you need to be careful as well because. Uh, you're, you're supplying no, minerals from both sides, from the nut side and also from here. So we need to be careful about that and just keep it in the back of your mind. Yes. But it, it, it is a great system to solve a, a problem very quickly. Whether it's bloat, we can put the bloat oil in there as well uh, for high clover uh, swords and that type of thing. And you can solve problems very quickly with it, you know. Another, management, another incorporation in your management. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we're also putting biotin in there now as well for the hooves of the cows and that sort of thing to harden the hooves of the cows. See, it, 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 problems can be solved very quickly yes. with, with, uh, with it. Like you said, it's all come back to this manifold here. Everything goes through that manifold there and virtually we can control the water anywhere on the farm now with any of those handles that are there. Yeah.
and this is the tank that I mentioned about the, the, the coming back from the coming back from the plate cooler, uh, the rainwater tank comes into that, and that that washes down the milking parlour then, and, and the floor and everything washes down all that inside. So it's everything to do with water is in here. Everything to do with electricity is in the in the in the in the other. Anyway. Well, it's separate anyway, and uh, these are the rainwater harvesting tanks here, and uh, our meal bin then, of course, is is uh, is there. So just on the housing facilities then, Michael. Uh, just, I suppose, a download on the shed here that you've put in. How many cubicles is in, in this shed? There's approximately 140 cubicles in there. Uh, this shed, it was, it was built actually in two stages. The, the, first, the, six, six the first six bays, the furthest six bays away, were originally a straw bedded shed when we had less numbers. Yeah. And uh, when the numbers went up, it, it, straw just didn't work. Yeah and um, we changed over that first six bays, we changed that over uh, to, to uh, cubicles, oh, I'd say maybe back in 2008, nine, something like that. And then when we went on up in numbers and, and when we, we built a new parlor here, uh, we had to add on uh, more cubicles uh, here into, into this uh, final six bays here just coming to us. And um, it's, it's yeah, it's, 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 working, it's working very well, um, it's working, we're very happy with it and slurry control, everything is, is, is caught here in, in, um, in, the, in the tanks and it flows out then into a flow channel, this is actually a flow channel yeah. and it carries it out into, into the, the lagoon then as yeah. well, you know. So, so. It's, you're minimising your workload, bringing slurry from one shed to another, you're trying to integrate all your slurry capacity into the one if you can at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we do have another cubicle shed above with 50 cubicles in it as well. Yes. And, uh, but um, the pressure's really only on that shed for a couple of months in the winter time, you know, uh, when cows are calving mm -hmm. and that type of thing. Um, we try to, we divide, we try to divide up the, at calving time, the sort of, we divide this shed maybe in the middle and then we have the other shed above and we sort of try to divide it in, in 50s or 60s. And As they're calving. Yeah, it's a calving days. Yeah. And that's a, so you're not going all over the shop in the next spring looking, oh God, where's cow 112 or where's cow, you know. They're all in rotation. Yes. And um, it, it's it's very simple. Michael's able to do it there with the drafter. Let the cows run through, pull out his 50 cows, 60 cows, first calvers, yeah. uh, or first, you know, the, the early calvers or whatever, and then work back through them, you know. So we know exactly where they are, and, we, and they just continue to move on then, uh, you know, as the calving season progresses. Did it? No, super. And, uh, like, obviously enough, you have a great feeding space, you have feeding all the lengths of the shed, and I suppose that's kind of sheltered. I oh, suppose yeah. your prevailing wind is coming from this yeah, side. Yeah, prevailing so. wind is there. Everything yeah. is everything is, 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 is coming here. And I mean, this where the bales are there now. Where the bales are, I mean, it's, it's only a temporary yard. We, we intend to build another cubicle shed there. There's space there for another maybe 80, 90 cubicles uh, mm -hmm. over there. And that'll be quite simple because when we were doing all this complex here, we decided we put another flow channel here. Mm -hmm. So everything from the proposed new cubicle shed will come. In there. Come back to so everything is everything is is is, is catered for. Indeed, super. Yeah, that's perfect. So, yeah, and the cows are in at the moment. There now they're just getting a little bit of silage with the with the reduced uh, the rate of uh, growth in the grass. Yeah, it's probably only be for another couple of days. So that's why the scrapers are going at this time of the year now. Yeah. So Michael, I suppose just on the the herd of cows here, um, just break down on breeding and I suppose numbers of cows spring calving herd. Yes, it's a complete spring calving herd now. We were we came from uh, milking all year round. Uh, we, we, have, we have changed that policy about four or five years ago now, and we have gone all spring calving. Um, we were coming from a very elite type of Holstein cow that maybe uh, it wasn't suitable maybe entirely for grass-based system, the yeah. type of cows that we had. We were milking 12,000, 14,000 litre cows and okay. it was very difficult to get them to fit into the, the grazing pattern. Um, so we, we, we took a decision then to change and we're more or less using the high EBI bulls now uh, and a bit of crossbreeding uh, also. 
uh, which is probably giving us better fats and protein. Now we can see it coming in the tank, we can see it coming in, in milk price and uh, it's, uh, it's all about driving profitability. Yes, you know. of course. Yeah. And I suppose, yeah, you made that, that, that switch. So like for this type system, what would you say is the main benefits out of it? Obviously you've mentioned that the fat and protein percentages has increased. Have you seen anything else? Well, fertility definitely has is 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 getting better every year. Yeah. Uh, you know, our, our fertility is 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 raising. Where we can see it in the compactness of the calf and and, and that type of thing. Like you know, uh, so we're, we're seeing that benefit. We're seeing a big benefit there in the fertility area. You know. Super. So I suppose Michael, in the past, on on two, on two separate occasions, mm -hmm. you would have called Grass Tech there and you were looking for livestock. I just suppose on the service and on, on your, your view of things, how did you find it? Well, I suppose uh, grass tech were recommended to me, I suppose, by uh, another farmer who had dealt with G also, and, and uh, they were, he was obviously very, very happy with, with uh, the service that G provided. And that led me on then, his recommendation led me on then to uh, grass tech. And um, uh, yeah, I, I found that if, you know, grass tech, they had a range of cows, you know, uh, it was great to, to maybe go out with yourself, Liam, and you could take me or take us to three, four different types of whether you wanted a, a high-end Holstein or you wanted a crossbred cow. You had the range of cows available to show to people. And, you know, that's grand when you're sitting about to try and buy. And the, your figures, everything were presented extremely well. You know, uh, there was no gamble. You, you saw what you were getting. You know, and in our situation, uh, we got what it said on the tin. Yeah. You know, on both occasions that we we dealt with grass tech. You know, so uh, I definitely would have no problem recommending you to another farmer anyway, and that's for sure. You know, that's much appreciated, Michael. Thanks. For yeah. For that. Yeah. Um.